Who's your favorites? I mean, if you had a set of Final Four right now, who you got? I'm not picking you to win the championship anymore because that's just <laughs> – I could pick you to win the regular season championship, but, it, like, to say, oh, yeah, you're going to make the Final Four, it, there's going to be – at some point it feels like a piano falling out of the sky that has nothing to do with you, lands on your car, and then my pick is ruined. The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. Hey, guys, what's up? Welcome to Actions Detrimental 2024 First Edition. We have Jared. I uh, can't even call you five purple vest 560 anymore. TBD, TBD on that, right? TBD till Saturday at the Clash. Yep. And we have a special, we have teammates now. <laughs> so if y'all thought I got preferential treatment from the media before, you don't even know. Because now we brought on <laughs> Jeff Gluck, Jordan Bianchi here to the Dirty Mo team. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. It's officially your first Dirty Mo podcast? Uh, no, I've been. No, on, you've been on DBC. I've been on DBC. I've been on Dale's. Yeah, shoot. Jeff's a veteran, so he's yeah. been on them all. Hey, welcome. We're actually going to be harder on you, Denny, now to prove to people that. <laughs> yeah, we're, actually, that's true. Uh, that's good. You're just trying to prove a point? Yeah. Send a okay. message. That's fair. <laughs> that's right. I get it. And we do expect any Feel. news or anything you have going on, you know, yeah. I mean, keep your teammates we, in mind. We can share, yeah. you know, here in the uh, Actions Detrimental uh, group here, we, we share notes, okay. you know, that way we know what we need to talk about. And, you know, fortunately for us at Actions Detrimental, you guys were a great asset to us anyway, because we had to use you guys, or I had to use you <laughs> guys a lot to find out what are they talking about? <laughs> what do I need to look into, right? And yeah. so uh, we, we've got all aspects covered for you NASCAR fans uh, going forward. Uh, you got the media. They're going to have their takes <laughs> right off the hot take on Sunday night, right? Yep. Mostly Sunday night, yeah, right? We Pretty much always every time. record right after the race, yep. about two hours. It's up Sunday night, first thing Sunday morning or Monday morning. Yep, and then our goal is to continue to shoot um, Actions Detrimental early Monday morning or Sunday night if we can for an early a, a try, we're going to try to do a lunch release when possible. Other times it'll be out, you know, probably early or late in the afternoon on Monday. Then you're going to have the DBC, right? You got the Dale Jr. download. You've got Dirty Mo Doe. They, Dirty Mo Media has got you covered pretty much. See, now here's the thing, though, with these guys coming over to Dirty Mo is now it's on Travis to get their podcast up <laughs> quick so we can listen to it. Because before, mm. I don't know, I feel like the mm. turnaround was pretty quick, but now we got to wait on Travis to... Oh, yeah. it, doesn't that fall on Jeff? It's on me, oh, actually. I'm, yeah. I'm the editor still. Oh, okay, so, so no, no, no got, issues yeah. there then. Yeah. Well, welcome to the family. Uh, I, I really was looking forward to this. Uh, you're probably only the probably third or fourth guest I've, we've had on Actions Detrimental, but it's a you guys are great guests because... You're full of knowledge. So he is. I'm not. I just ride his coattails. So it's good. Mm, is that true? Please. This guy, he's like the most frustrating person. Jeez. Like he's just always like, oh, no, it's all you. You're doing everything, blah, blah, blah. And he's like dropping the Bianchi bombs all the time, which I, I, don't I have know. Blood bombs. <laughs> right. So, like, you know, it's just this Minnesota nice humility that I don't really buy, but it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's horrible to have a teammate that puts you first and always says, hey, you know what? You go ahead. Yeah. It's awful. Uh, everyone needs a good teammate for sure. Um, well, I mean, you know, we can preview the clash. We can talk about all season news. Um, obviously, we're taping here on Tuesday afternoon. The Netflix uh, full speed just dropped uh, early this morning. Uh, first, I mean, I, I guess I probably should step aside in this this part of things but i mean what's your what's your take jeff jordan i have not seen so, it. he has oh okay i i don't know how to, to say this without sounding like a dick but i kind of went in kind of skeptical <laughs> about it because i feel like there's been shows like the usa show right like there's all this build up for it and you're like is this really going to be good like is this going to be the drive to survive that nascar wants and needs and then i just felt like I don't know. It, it, it wasn't just the time slot either. Like it just felt sort of forced in a way, like the conversations were being recapped of something later. Like it was, it just felt like it was trying so hard. This show I think might be the greatest NASCAR content or, or up there, like definitely the greatest NASCAR docu-series. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was thoroughly impressed. Like I just thought the access 
that was given by the drivers. I mean, you are in the motorhome with people in heartbreaking moments. Denny, I mean, your moment after Martinsville with your daughter. I mean, I'm not trying to spoil it for everybody, but yeah. you, you guys will see when you watch it. It's like you are there. Like Christopher Bell, you know, is eliminated from the championship race and he goes into his motorhome and his wife's crying and like, the camera follows them in. It's there's like nothing. You, you you don't see a moment at least where the drivers are like, no, not, not right now. Like it's, you feel like you're inside on it. And I just feel like the, it was the most authentic and real thing, like reflection I've seen of NASCAR, like the drivers on screen. I'm like, yeah, that's who I feel like I know, or like, that's, that's my dealings with them. Like that mm -hmm. seems accurate. And then the way it's presented, like you, you heard all the stuff from F1 last year, like, oh, they, they sensationalize this too much. They, they over dramatize this. I, this, I felt like, no, that was accurate. I mean, yeah. From what I could tell. I, so I agree with that. I, you know, my, the little I know of Ross, the little I know of William, the little bit I know of Joey, like, I, I feel like everyone was portrayed as they are. I, I, I didn't see any extra dramatization, I guess I could say, of someone's character that is not real. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, from my perspective, it was uh, it's tough to watch. I mean, in the sense of, you know, I, I know how this story ends, and I know, um, you know, how hard I want it. And my, it, to me, I'm not much of a crier, okay? But... I, I, I did when I watched my dad's interview because you just get a little bit more perspective of what it would mean to them. And so it's, it was a different perspective for sure that I, I certainly think that they did a really, really good job of. I'd be interested to know, I, I know Netflix really had the controls of this, but was it so different and was it so good because they were learning on the fly? So they just says, well, this is what I find interesting. So we're just going to follow that versus, you know, if it's NASCAR Productions doing it, you know, they, they kind of know that, hey, this is what we kind of want to show or whatever. Right. The Netflix crew is the same type of people that this show is trying to attract, right? People who have never experienced NASCAR before. Mm -hmm. A lot of those Netflix crew guys, I think came to the racetrack for the first time. Yeah, and I know that they used the NASCAR production. It sounded bad when I said that. They use a lot of NASCAR production in this. So, you know, I, Footage I think they, yes. And stuff. But I think that Netflix had the control over, we're going to show the storylines that we think is compelling. Someone that don't doesn't know anything about the sport. So I think that maybe that's why, Jeff, you see it as, wow, this is a lot different um than than what you've seen before i maybe i'm wrong but it felt like the interviews even with like the talking head types are right before a race or right after a race kind of thing it's not like okay let's sit down at the end of the 10 weeks and pretend like darlington just ended and give me your reaction to this and they're like oh yeah that was a huge moment when this happened it's like it feels like this just happened or i don't know what's going to happen yet in the next race this could be huge and by weaving that all together with the footage they were able to capture, it's just it just perfectly lines up with each yeah. other, and it makes you feel like you're really living in the moment. Yep. I was going to say, did you have reservations going in, agreeing to do this? No. Only because I knew what uh, the potential for it was, and I knew that um, I knew that they were going to ask for more access than you know others have been granted before. Uh, but I understand that they have a show to make, right? And sometimes when, you know, when I watch shows, it's the access that, man, I've never seen that before. That's what I find compelling. Yeah. So my rule of thumb for them was the answer is always yes. Whatever you want, unless I tell you no. And I just never had an instance where I, I felt uncomfortable and told them no. So, you know, I said, you know, short of me, you know, being naked and not having my suit on, like, I, I don't really <laughs> care. You, you know, come, if, if you want to follow me all the way to the bus, that, go right ahead. The door's going to, I'm going to keep it open behind me. So I, I just allowed them to have the access, um, which is probably why 
you know, the screen time was probably more. And, you know, I, I heard and I watched it as well. And it, the producers had decisions to make, right? Early in, they were trying to figure out who's going to win the championship with 10 weeks to go. So that's why, and I noticed at Darlington, right? They were following Joey. They were following these guys. But as they fell off, mm -hmm. then you had the, the Christopher Bells come into the story. It's like, shit, we didn't plan for that. Because, you know, you could argue, yeah, well, he's been to the Final Four now for a couple of years. But at the time, it he had just made it last year for the first time. So they, they were trying to catch up at the very end to, oh, shit, here's going to be the Final Four. But they followed... I noticed that they followed guys in, in the, the beginning episodes were followed by people that perennially make the top eight 90% of the time, right? Because they know that that's not going to go wasted footage. That's a good point. I didn't ever think about that, is that they had to pick guys. So, again, this footage isn't necessarily wasted. I think that's the, the key to this. Did you feel that now that you've watched it back, um, going back to Jeff's question earlier, did you feel that you were – portrayed accurately like the way you view yourself is that kind of how you feel like you were portrayed i do and it's interesting for i i know people are going to think man you got a lot of screen time they they didn't show a lot there was a lot of footage that is left on the cutting room floor that i thought would make it that did not so <laughs> is there anything that you're glad that did not make no, it? no not really but just like some interaction with some friends things like that like Surprised that it didn't make it, but it's it's probably for the best. <laughs> but but you know they they were part of this ride for the whole ten weeks. Well, really nine weeks for me. I think that's what was most. I have not seen it either yet, but I think that's what was most surprising to me upon the announcement is that being around you for the last however many weeks, um, I know how much Netflix shot of you, and the fact that this is only a five episode series. Yeah, I'm wondering. Like, how could they possibly have fit all of <laughs> right. that in? Like, they got to make room for right. eight other drivers. Right, right. So it, it was a tough balance, for sure. Well, uh, Jordan, you're going to have to catch up. Uh, you you know. Been a little busy. Yeah, I figure you have. You just came back from Rolex. Daytona. Yeah, was right, for the Rolex. Yep. Um, you know, you were saying how the atmosphere was just. It's crazy. I mean, they had electric. the record crowd on there. Kudos to them. And there's people everywhere. And the thing that blew me away was... Everybody gets garage access. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I do know if you're trying to sell a sport to people, giving them up close opportunities to get close to everything, whether in a pre race on the grid or garage access, you know, anytime you want, um, is, is a great way to do it. And I think you have value for your ticket. There's a lot to do. It's also a race, too, where you can come, watch for a little bit, leave, come back, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, it, it is interesting to see what it's like and you know i'm not a car person per se it's not my interest but and we hear a lot about how we're not a car culture anymore but you go there and cars matter like mm -hmm. you've got the corvette displays over here and all the car corvette people are hanging out and the lexus folks and it's just it's 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 different it's very different than what you see a lot of places yeah I, same thing for me when i went to f1 and that was my in in vegas it, that was my first f1 experience and i i I don't consider myself a car guy. I'm, I'm certainly not going out there and changing my own oil oh, right now. No. Now I used to, I can't but not now, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I also found it fascinating that, like, wow, look at all this technology mm -hmm. that I would think you guys would be scared to show. Mm -hmm. It's just out there laying in the middle of the paddock. Like, you're not afraid of your wing just sitting right there? Like, no, nah, not, you know... It, we there's cameras everywhere and our competitors have pictures of our stuff before we even unload. Like they, they know it's going to get taken and there's nothing you're going to see there with the blind eye that they are not analyzing with cameras and stuff anyway. So, but I was geeked out about, you know, the car stuff. Like it was about the cars, you know, when I was there. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's one thing that maybe we miss out on a little bit, but we don't have as much, I, I would, we probably don't have as much technology, I would say. No, not even close. Yeah, it's, it's not. And it's a little, it's hard to compare because it's their biggest race. It comes in January where there's an off season. And it's just, it's kind of the kickoff, if you will. So there's this natural excitement and everybody wants to be there thing. Now, you know, is it 
you know, you go to like a New Hampshire NASCAR race is that, you know, of course it's going to be different compared to the Rolex, but I think you compare the Daytona 500 or you compare another, you know, Coca-Cola 600 to this, it, it, there is some comparability there. Yeah, for sure. Can you explain Jordan what I've been seeing all over Twitter about the finish of this race? Yeah. So basically, um, someone had an itchy trigger finger in the scoring tower. <laughs> Um, and there was a, just under three minutes to go in the race. And because it's a 24 hour race, it's a time thing. And if it gets to a certain point where there's less time than a lap, they're going to, they're going to call the race. They could have gotten basically two more laps, at least one more lap in, if not two more laps in. And instead of waving the checkered white flag and then the checkered flag, they waved. the Yeah. On TV, flag. they were telling us the whole yeah. time uh, there's two to go. Right. Yeah. And so they're coming off NASCAR turn four. And I'm thinking, I, and it's, it, listen, it didn't affect the yes, outcome. All, the, the, yeah. all the finishes were spread. Yeah. You know, the first and second was spread quite a bit. Um, but you would think, like, on the trigger finger, if it's close, you're saying there's like, it's like two or three minutes. Like, you got to err on if anything, it's too long, not too short. Yeah. And I heard, and, and I, I don't want to, I got to be very careful I say this because this is all second, third hand. But there might have been some mis miscommunication between the tower and the. the You're on dirty mo. You don't have to be scared. Yeah, I tried to, I don't want to throw people, I don't want to <laughs> say anything incorrect. I don't want to get me in trouble. But there could have been some miscommunication, right? Of like yeah. what the tower wanted versus what actually happened. And so could that have been the thing? And at the end of the day, the flags rule everything. And if the flag yep. waves, that's, yep. the, that's the ruling. Yep. So. Uh, what's, what's some off season big news over the last month or month coming up that y'all see in the forefront? What are you looking for? Jeff, you want to go? I, I think it's been the quietest off season. First of all, um, maybe ever that I can remember. I just feel like I, I kept waiting for storylines or things mm -hmm. to pop up or buzz or something. And, and it just, I was so surprised how it just sort of fell off. Like, where was NASCAR? Like, and I don't know if it was that that the F1 Vegas thing came so quick after NASCAR, and then people were like talking about F1 Vegas, and then people forgot to bring NASCAR up mm. again or something. But I feel like, and, and maybe it's that silly season was just so much settled this year that none of it bled over into the off seasons. So there wasn't a lot of questions that, oh, what's we're waiting on this. I mean, you kind of were like waiting on Noah Gregson, but everybody knew that was going to happen. All right. So I don't know. It was just like a really weird, like I've been very anxious to get back to the track to have like actual storylines to talk about again, because I'm right. like, what, what are we supposed to be talking about? Like, I don't know if it almost felt too, from like a marketing standpoint, like, are they waiting for full speed to come out and then they can really push that and try to get new fans that way and, and ramp it up. But it's just it, like January for me has felt so long, just waiting for, something to talk about nascar wise because i feel like we're still talking about last year and we don't have like a ton of like oh this is gonna be i mean yeah toyota ford new cars but we don't really know because there's no testing preseason anymore so i don't know it's been kind of a mystery to me i agree with that to some extent though most of the big silly season moves are always decided well before the season ends like we already know by phoenix who's the big names or who are going to be where or have a really good idea so that that to me wasn't thing to me uh, it feels like it's almost being kicked down the road a little bit the can because a lot of the stuff is bubbling we had the tv deal which was announced which was a big thing um but let's be honest the charter thing is the next big thing in this sport and that's the thing that feels like it's bubbling a little bit there's nothing to talk about right now at least publicly no one wants to talk about it publicly but I'll tell you what, in the next month or maybe even less, that's going to be the issue. So mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the things that are being discussed right now, whether it's the charter stuff, I would say the schedule for 2025, you know, Mexico, Montreal, what happens with the clash. These are all the conversations that are starting to happen if they already haven't started to happen. And so we're not really hearing about that yet, or at least not to the degree we're ready to report on it. I think these things are happening, but I think a lot of this stuff is going to come up you know, a month, two, three months down the road. Yeah. I, we, we, the team owners did have a meeting with NASCAR this, this morning. And one of the things you talk about schedule, one thing Ben Kennedy wanted to make, you know, apparent is that, you know, it, over the last couple of years with all the big changes that we had, it was pushed so late into the year, mm -hmm. September, October. He's, you know, the, it sounds like they're hoping that it's going to, this is going to be a summer release <laughs> thing. <laughs> they, I know I, you've they, heard this before. Well, they see this every year. They, I, they, I know. And, I, I know. And, it's, and, I, and I don't mean, I'm not trying to disparage them because it is hard. I mean, there's yeah. so many moving parts, but it, it, they wanted to have it out last summer. They want to have it in August. And then it just, you know, yeah. and it's not their fault necessarily. Yeah. And I think a lot of that probably was 
around one track, right? Yeah. Are you going to get the deal done with Montreal? Right. With the track or not. And so that kind of held up uh, a lot of things, but it sounds like ducks are in a row a little bit more this year than, than in the past for sure. How do we feel about the new TV deal though? We haven't spoken yeah. about that and you haven't tweeted anything about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I want to, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. This kind of falls in line with what these guys are talking about with the kind of the lull in the off season. I think a lot of this is because our season is so long. Everyone just wants to take a breath. You know, just it, it's so long and grueling that, I mean, even the race teams are just, I mean, they are checked out for a month and a half. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a, it's, it's hard because we don't have summer break. You know, we don't have the summer break like F1 has or, or, or what have you. We go for, what is that 39 40 weeks or something like that um and it's and it's hard and when er, when it's finally over everyone's just like you finally hit the couch at the end of a long day and you're just like don't talk to me i don't want to be on social media i just want to take a break from it all and that's probably why it's tough to you know get some different stories now in the contrast what and not a lot of moving parts either. I think that there's probably less turnover on teams that there's ever been before. I mean, it used to be this crew chief's going to a yeah. new organization or whatever. Short of the the uh, colleague and track house swap, is there any other crew chiefs leaving one organization going to another? I, not that I know of. I'd have to go look. Not off the top of my head. Right. And, but that has been a thing that is yeah. triggered in the past. Now, the only thing that is big in our sport that has a big performance is pit crew guys. Now, they have they do move around, but we we don't hear about them as much. Um, but it is a – it's certainly a big – it will be a big topic in the summer where we're talking about who lost on pit road or who won on pit road. Yeah. So – um, you know, that's just uh, it's part of our sport. The, the one thing that's really unique about NASCAR, and I think it's to its detriment, is you look at the NFL, you look at the NBA. They have done a really good job in their off season of having events, right? Yes. The, and the NFL has got the draft, and then it's got free agency and the combine, and then camp start. And it's like once a month, you they have one thing they can circle to. Now the NASCAR off season is only two months long or about, and the free agency in NASCAR is so weird because everything is decided mid season for the next year. But it's like come no mid November, come December, there there isn't anything to like look forward to and anticipate. Yeah, well, superstars are changing teams. Yeah, Tyre Kill, he's he's leaving Kansas City, he's going to Miami, yep. right? It's just your your superstars when the contract's up, they just you know, we got another one, right? It's I'm staying where I'm at, I'm happy where I'm at, they're happy with me, and you just kind of you keep going. It <clears throat> it doesn't. There's not a big free agency period in NASCAR like it is in, in other sports. But also, like Jordan said, because the NASCAR season is so long that these things that happen in the NFL offseason are just packed into the yeah. NASCAR regular season, right? Like like the charter deal seems like that's something that you would discuss in the offseason. Mm -hmm. But because the NASCAR season is 10 months long, yeah. It's just a part of it. And, you know, you have free agency stuff. It's like, and I get why it is. You have sponsors. You've got businesses that have to make decisions for their quarterly reports, you know, the following year. They've got to know six months in advance. But it would be great if a lot of the free agent signings, if, you know, Kyle Busch is going to Richard Childress Racing. They're not making that announcement in September. They're making it in December. Then people are like, oh, and NASCAR's in the headlines again. Mm -hmm. That's a big story. The, you, you, things like that. But, again, you, you can't change it. It's, it, it is right. what it is. Yeah. Cause people like you yeah, are trying to, to get it out as <laughs> quick as possible. Yeah, absolutely. We used to also have, you know, more stuff media wise to do in January. You know, there used to be almost, I think it was five days, right? Four or right. five A days week? of a media tour right? where everybody would come and go to every shop and then you'd hear from everybody. And, you know, that's one of the things that got cut as the sport started getting smaller and stuff. But, um, it, it, you know, that okay. was at least okay. something to the, talk about. The sport's getting smaller? Revenue is an all-time high for the sport. For the sport, it feels like uh, it feels like the sport's getting smaller. If you think about the weekends getting smaller, I guess the schedule's not getting smaller yeah. itself. But and this the, is what this is what I struggle you know, with. Is, there's no testing. There's no practice. It's like, you know, expensive, in, in Jeff. Way. It's that's expensive for us. But I, I struggle with this because I, I I know, but the revenue would say otherwise. It's bigger than it's ever been. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's I, it's an interest it's an interesting thing 
you feel like it's shrinking, yet it's bigger than it's ever been in a financial aspect. So how much can we cut the grass before there's no grass to be cut? I look at, I think practice is the great way to look at this. Like, I agree. I think the old model of having three 50 minute practice sessions, two on Friday, one on Saturday, plus qualifying was probably too much. Right. And I understand why you wanted to trim that back, but to have it too often, it feels like going into a weekend. It's like, you don't even know there's a race sometimes or feels like there's a race. It's like, boom, cars on the track for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. They're practicing, they're qualifying. Oh, we're racing the next day. Yeah. There's no anticipation. You talk about the Rolex, right? And they had so many practice sessions. There was always different things going yep. on in the racetrack. It, there's a little bit of buildup. I, I don't need, I, there's a happy medium. What it was before was too much. What it is now is too little. But something in the middle there is just right. And yeah. there needs to be, this is a big time sport. And it is, it is expensive. And I understand you have to keep budgets and everything like that. But you got to be mindful of the fact that you still have a product to do. Like NFL teams aren't cutting back on what they're offering fans in terms of of uh, on-field action like you, and, we've reduced on track content yeah for sure and i don't know and that's not a good thing because that is what you're selling yes and so if you're trying to sell a sport you're now taking less inventory and trying to sell them how, how do you do that I, I don't know the answer to that um it has to be financially viable for the teams to yeah. do it i mean that's just yeah. the bottom line or else you're going to have one or two teams drop out of business every single year if we if we had to do full practice the, the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday. Let's just rewind the schedule pre-COVID, you yeah. know, 2019. There's no way 2311 would be able to sustain. Yeah. And that's there is absolutely no yeah. way. Because of, you know, what we budget for sponsorship revenue versus what we get from NASCAR, it just doesn't, it will not make sense. So now what NASCAR has done and says, okay, okay, y'all can't afford it. We're not, you know, we're going to just help you guys save save money all while revenue has continued to go up. So that's, you know, that probably will be the sticking point, I, I think, in the future um, and probably part of y'all's storylines. But, you know, we got to let it play out. You know, we certainly, uh, you know, I can't speak for the TNC. They're the ones who, uh, who have been in the in-depth negotiations and sitting in rooms with, you know, NASCAR for hours on end, right? Um you know, but I, here we are in the 11th hour again, right? And, you know, we tried to start these conversations two years ago and just, it's been just delay, delay, delay. And then now here we are, we, it, we're, we're at the end of the rope. So it's, um, it's just an interesting and it's a tough spot to be in. You know, NASCAR just signed this new TV deal, which, you know, we, it, it sounds great. I, I, you know, until we know everything about it, we don't really know, you know, how it all flows and everything. So, I think, um, you know, it, it, there's certainly some work to be done, right? Um, do I believe we are closer to a deal now than 12 months ago? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think really? so. Um, but but then again, it just takes time, right? It just takes meetings, right? You, you got to get in a room like they're doing to try to, uh, you know, iron out a deal. But it's going to, you're going to have to have people willing to, uh, that that make the ultimate decision, be in the room to, say yes or no right for right now it's just you know you're, you're delivering the mail to the mailman he's giving it to you know, the other owner and he'll make some notes and send it back to the mailman and then we we get it's just we, we we gotta we gotta iron it out for sure because we i think the sport's gonna have some great momentum um you know from this netflix documentary i think the daytona 500 is always a big one uh that that will always have great pub to it and you want to have positive you know pub for, for your sport right so i think that the tone can be set early on in the year you know if we can get this thing done to then have a positive start to the season so are you worried about what about it not you know it's it's dragging on longer than you wanted it's like you know you said it's the 11th hour like should should fans be worried about this or is it just going to sort itself out i think you know, it, it usually always sorts itself out in the end, right? It, it has historically. Um, so I, I would see no reason why it, it wouldn't now. Um, but, you know, it's just been a very, very slow moving turtle to this point. And um, certainly we did not want to wait till this, this late, right? And we've already had to 
extend once. And so I think that, um, you know, we, we try to have those conversations early, but they, they didn't know what the media landscape was going to be. Now that they figured that out. I think they're in a much better position to uh, certainly uh, transfer that information into what would be a fair, equitable deal for both sides. So you sound pretty confident then. I, I mean, <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I, it's going to uh, get done. It's, hey, I mean, you just have to kind sure? of, a it's positive vibes <laughs> only here. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to be negative. Nancy, Denny Downer. It's positive. All right. Um, okay. So let's, let's move on from that. Um, you know, let's just keep it positive because I think, you know, in the end, both sides will, will come to, uh, it's in everybody's best interest. You, you bet you, you bet you on that for sure. Um, what else have we got here on the list there, Jared? I mean, we got a race coming up. Yeah, we've got the first race of the season this weekend, the Clash in, in L.A. How do we... Hey, I, you know what? I want to go back one thing. Sorry. Okay. I You were talking about the grid access, and this brings me to what was... It, it got a little blip on the media radar there for a little while, and people were talking about on social media. Joey's comments about our fans being, you know, a mm-hmm. little too spoiled... I think it was taken a little bit out of context. It's certainly not what he meant. Yeah. He he just meant that, hey, you know, our fans have a ton of access. Compared to other sports, absolutely. He, compared to other sports, we have a ton of access, right? And so where do you guys stand on that? Because it is such a hard topic because I think about it as well, and it's like, are we over, are we too accessible or and oversaturated, or do we need to go the other way? And be more. I, where do you guys stand on that opinion? Jeff, go ahead. So I, I kind of see it two ways. I don't know that everybody needs to be in the garage and on pit road in people's workplaces, right? Like this is essentially people are preparing for a race. They're getting their pit boxes set up, you know, everything. You know, I don't know that that needs to be like where everybody is is allowed to gather. Um, i I think that's fine if that's still sort of like a VIP area, but I could also see the appeal of like, Hey, can we get the drivers outside the track more? You know, there used to be, and and they, they still do a good job, you know, of, of trying to do like the, the NASCAR race day experience and, and the stage and stuff. But um, it, it feels like still, you know, the fan zones aren't quite as robust as they used to be when you'd have drivers going to haulers all the time. I mean, I think there used to be a time when, if you were a fan and you went to a race weekend, you're like, if I really want to meet my driver, I know he's doing this appearance mm-hmm. at this store. He's going to be in the fan zone here. He's going to be at his hauler here if I buy his merch or whatever. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but like, is it obvious as a fan now? Like if I want to meet X driver, I'm going to have that chance. And, and maybe that's no. not, maybe that yeah. is entitlement, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. I don't know they need to be in right in the middle of everything though. If that makes I, sense. Yeah, but Jeff, what I'm saying, I don't think the drivers are saying no. It's it's the reason, you know, when I used to chase my favorite drivers when I was younger, when they came to Richmond, my mom had a list of Davy Allison's going to be here, Alan Quickie's going to be here, Bill Elliott's going to be here, Dale Earnhardt's going to be here. And they she had a list of an enti- itinerary. And, I mean, I'm telling you, these lines were three hours long at minimum. I mean, the it just took forever that the fandom was amazing back then, but we would schedule out the entire day of we're going to be able to hit four drivers today. Right. Um, but a lot of that was circled around. They weren't just sitting in a parking lot, signing autographs. They were at, you know, for, for Davey, they were at their, at the gas station. Right. And, and, you know, Dale Earnhardt was at a, a, at a dealership. So it just, it's, it's the activation within the sponsor, right? And do they, how do they activate the sponsorship that they actually have? That's probably why you see less of uh, sponsor, you know, driver appearances because it, the, the sponsorships are pieced together. It's well, that, that was going to ask you that though. So, I mean, it's NASCAR the way it is now you have, I don't know how many different sponsors on a lot primary sponsors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is that part of it? When before, like you had, almost one sponsor for the entire year. Right. So like, and, and, and honestly multiple years and they could get behind you and they knew this was our guy and we're going right. to push him hard. Now it's like it, these, a lot of these deals are thrown together sometimes mid season. Yeah. They just, they, the sponsor, the new ones that come in, they just dip their toe yeah. in it. Right. Like to see 
is this going to work for us or not? It's, you know, um, you know, one probably success story is like, you know, Mavis on our car, right? And they, they dipped their toe in last year. And then, you know, this year you're going to see a national commercial played mm-hmm. probably a lot, right? And they increased their races. And so, um, you know, it's certainly, that's the kind of activation that we see. We see if you, if NASCAR went to a commercial, I would say you'd see no less than three drivers in that course of that two and a half minutes yeah. versus, you know, in, in different commercials. Um, but that costs money, right? And the sponsorship has the budget not only to be on the car, activate at the racetrack, but then activate outside the racetrack as well. And that there's just, there's only so many sports dollars and there's so many options yeah. to spread that around now. So that again, just goes Eight. back to, the money issue, right? If it's a bit more affordable for sponsors, then you have one sponsor that's probably on the car for a handful of more races. Yes. And then they can create these, you know, strategies right. and, and marketing around a particular driver. Yeah, it, it is. Oh, you know, but it's, you know, sponsorship is such a large percentage of our revenue. So if, you know, if you lose one substantial sponsor, that team is looking to cut all it can. Yeah. And what you've seen over the last, 15 years is a lot of cutting, right? So, and it's, and it's, it, it, you go out of business or you cut, you pick one or the other, but there hasn't been an offset in the NASCAR revenue to, to help with that. And so, um, that's, that's kind of why you've seen, while it feels one way, but is actually another. Okay. So from my view, it feels like, well, the just, you, you said it's not true, but it feels like, oh, the, drives, the drivers don't want to do as much as they used to or whatever, right? Because I asked, I asked Harvick about this last year in his like retirement press conference thing. I was like, are, are you busier now than you used to be? Or like, you know, because you have, it's, it's different obligations, right? And he said, you know, back then when you guys had to really go all over the country and testing and all way more appearances and all that stuff, like you were flying a lot more, you were gone from home a lot more. Like he said, that was harder than it, it is now. Yet, you know, now your your time has been replaced probably by looking at data or going to the sim sessions or stuff like that, maybe. But he said it's still not, you know, to the degree it was. But so then if it, if there is some sort of willingness on the driver's part to do more and there might be some extra time, who is responsible for getting that back? Like having the driver or asking the drivers to do more or, or telling the drivers there could be this opportunity is it all on the activations or is there another way to bring some of that back well i mean it's no secret right they're they're going to do this driver incentive program right it's like the pip and and golf um they're going to incentivize you know the drivers to go out and help promote the sport it's going to be it's essentially nascar's marketing um uh, you know strategy right they're they're going to pay the drivers who have good big platforms and even guys that don't you know uh, to to go out there and you know they're going to create some sort of I don't know, ranking system and there, you know, you'll get a, a, some sort of multiplier depending on what your stature is in the sport. Um, and they're going to, they're going to pay guys and they're, so they're going, they're going to incentivize drivers to try to do more. Right. And when they get a request to go to, you know, Illinois to, you know, go do a media block or something, you know, they're likely going to have more drivers say, I'll do it. Right, because it you know they'll be rewarded financially for that. Hmm. So you think that, that you new, think that drivers that, will respond? That's not news to you. No, no, I've heard it. I'm just I'm curious. I'm, it's a good idea in theory. I'm just curious if it's actually. I, I agree in theory. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, is I you know, I don't know the particulars necessarily. I've heard about it, but I'm, I'm curious to see if it's enough incentive to. And I only listen. I I only speak on it because I think a NASCAR executive actually said that we're we're going to do that, right? Yeah. So I don't think this is uh, secretive. No, no. I mean, it's anyway. it's. I think it's pretty common. Yeah. yeah. How, how how do you feel about it? Because you're in a different situation than a lot of these drivers. You have stake in the sport through owning a team, right? So you naturally want to see the sport grow, mm-hmm. and um, you know, like that's all that's all good for you. But what about a driver who's may just be here to race? on Sunday and then, you know, may not have plans to stick around the sport after they retire. Like, well, well, how much, you know, how much incentive would you need if you were that type of person? Well, I, you know, I heard Kyle Larson's statements uh, not too long ago, right? He said, well, half the dirt late model field makes more than half the cup field and, or or the top guys, Mm -hmm. I guess, in dirt late models. And he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. And that is, 
That they, is out of whack. They sell a lot of merchandise over there. <sighs> they, they do crazy numbers. Yeah, I mean, don't even get me going on merchandise. That whole model, you know, got broken. A, a lot of this just came from a lot of greed for a lot of long time. Right. And there was some tracks or some, you know, NASCAR. Everyone had a hand in, you know, how this thing all, you know, crashed at once. And then it's slowly building itself back up. Um, but, yeah, that was. Uh, so he says that. And so what hopefully this program will do. Right. Is that. Uh, let's just say Michael McDowell. Right. Who probably doesn't make a huge salary. I think he'll say that publicly. He is incentivized to do more for the sport because he probably could make more or as much in this new driver incentive deal. So uh, if he works hard, I mean, yeah. if, he, if he does enough, it, it will take him a lot to do. But um, I think certainly he, you know, a person like him would be more incentivized to, uh, to go out there and do it. So as a team owner, I say, okay, I get it. And, I agree with Jordan. In theory, it seems like a good idea, um, but it's you know we also need the drivers as well. Um, you know we sell assets to sponsorship that you know we're going to have the drivers this x amount of appearances, and um, you know we just don't want that to be a conflict of hey our drivers raising his hand to go do this NASCAR thing to help them sell tickets instead of servicing our sponsor that needs you on that same day. So that's kind of the push pull that you'll, you know, that, that could happen. Should we move on and talk about the clash this weekend? I know we kind of went down this road. Like we have a race this weekend and somehow got off track, but we do have a race this weekend. We do. We do. I don't know. Um, it's so interesting with the clash because I, I understand. Like, I think the first year at LA was, Awesome. I, we, I thought we all thought it was. I, I feel a lot about LA the first time is how I thought Chicago was going to be. I was, oh, this is going to be a shit show. Like this it, it, track, yeah. it's stupid. Like it. But then watching it, as I, you know, I fell. I think I had a mechanical problem the first year. And then I was sat in the stands for the last half of the race. I'm like, it's pretty damn electric, right? And then the ratings back that up. But just over time, right? It just then you it starts to get repetitive and. The second year, I mean, still there was a gain in the ratings, um, which is a good thing over what probably the last clash was uh, when it was at Daytona. Um, but I don't know. I just feel like, generally speaking, do you take one from the other? So maybe the clash is better ratings-wise, but the clash used to be at Daytona. And the storylines that came out of the clash, that the super speedway clash, was that that guy is that they're going to be strong for the 500, right? There were so many storylines that came out of the clash. And I mean, w this just goes back into the, you know, we're, we're just the, the on track content is not as much. I mean, we hit the track for the very first time. We're qualifying yeah. for our biggest race. There's no buzz. There's no uh, lead up. There's nothing. no anticipation. There's nothing. No, yeah. That is, I'm sorry, but that is just not a good strategy whatsoever. I don't know how it, has now passed for two years in a row. Um, but it, it is what it is. And even as a team owner, I'm like, well, I mean, even you just, if, if I got to parade my car around the racetrack, the 23 and 45 for a couple laps, just to get the, Hey, the fluids are good. We're, we, we got no leaks, whatever you guys aren't drafting. Cause we're not wrecking, right. We're not going to wreck these things. You got it. We got to have some sort of buzz leading up to right and so i'm wondering since there's no correlation between the clash and the 500 does the 500 then suffer slightly because of the lack of buildup well so I, it's funny you should say this i'm working on a story this week for the athletic um that you can read and, and conversation i've had though is is on the tv side they like having the clash where it is because it's a great build up for them they they, they hype it it's in la yeah and great it, market it, it, great market I, I and it. then it can push the daytona 500 where you know Daytona 500 qualifying or the duels aren't necessarily going to do that, but it gives them some storylines from that, and they can start to sell the sport that way. Um, yeah, but but the clash was always just we we stayed down there. Yeah, right. Or, well, it, was it the clash it, was the Sunday before the 500? Right. It was so it, the whole week. But now, yeah, you can have the clash. It's over with. But then you got the Super Bowl, yeah. and I hate to say it, but you're you're yeah, you just move on away. You've moved on from the clash and has no yeah. relevance until. 
we're going to go watch day two and five hundred qualify. So let me ask you this: If you, what would you do with the clash next year? Let's say you were three years in LA. I think we can all agree it's probably I don't want to say run its course, but we, you've kind of got the juice out of that lemon, right? And so where can you go get another lemon and start squeezing from? Where are you going to move that race to? Hmm. What, what can you do with it? Because I don't know if moving it to Daytona is going to do what uh, you know. I, I know. So where where what do you do with that? Because you're not going to get rid of it, by the way, because that's built in the new TV contract for TV inventory. So you're going to have a race of that, you know, caliber. What do you do with it? I think also part of this question is what is the goal of the clash? Like, what are you trying to get out of the clash? Let me just generally speak an exciting exhibition race that builds up anticipation for your biggest race of the year. I, that's just a very broad statement. I don't know how you achieve all that. Jeff, you got any ideas on this? Where, where should go? Well, I think part of the problem is I, this hit home to me the other day. I, uh, I'm a Broncos fan and it's, it was like 26 year anniversary of the Broncos winning that Super Bowl against the Packers or whatever. Right. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's an anniversary. We're in late January. And I was like, Oh yeah. You know, before the NFL season was as long as it is now, um, it was done in late January. You didn't have this problem of the Super Bowl almost being on President's Day weekend. So I think that's made it really complicated, right? Because now you can't have Daytona 500 qualifying on Super Bowl Sunday, which is the weekend before. Um, so that's why they've had to sort of move that. And then it's like, well, we can't have the clash Saturday night before the Super Bowl, maybe. So let's move that and have a week. So that really, the NFL really makes it very challenging in that aspect um because i don't you know it's not like you you're not going to move the daytona 500 date so if you want to have that as your firm date I, I don't really know what you do there but i do think that the clash stadium concept has shown mm -hmm. that, that you can create buzz at that time of the year you can sort of remind people that nascar is starting the la thing i think you know the coliseum it feels like it's worn off a little bit i mean i haven't gotten down there yet this week but just doesn't feel like it's that same buzz that you guys were talking about. Um, but that's probably year three of any event. So, sure. you know, if you can take it to another stadium, you can find something. I mean, I think people would watch it and um, I think there's something to be said for it. I, I just don't know what the right thing to hit on is. Cause it's not like the racing's amazing there. It's just sort of more of a spectacle of like, Oh yeah, NASCAR yeah. back. Here's like this little, you know, it's this good little appetizer. track. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, I left 2311 shop late last night. Uh, they were, you know, finishing up one of the cars. And actually, the crew guys were like, we like the warm up. It, you know, it does get us, our bearings back under us. You know, we don't have to bring the pit box and all that stuff, all that, all the stuff that goes with it. But yet, it's, it's just enough for us to get into a rhythm, right? And so um, there's value for the teams in that aspect. Now, there's zero value as far as like, you know, from an economical sense for us, right? I mean, we likely will, you know, knock the front end off and all this. Stuff. It's, it's just a bad economic ec uh, proposition for us. And, but, you know, we were sold on it that, hey, this is an investment uh, to, you know, get, you know, get some energy going and the ratings back that up at least for the first you know couple of years. So um, hopefully that, that does continue because you know, I think we're, we're in for a great season. I, I certainly think that uh, the competition field is wide open um, and you just, you just don't know. I mean, last year, no one saw Blaney come. Netflix didn't see Blaney come until episode three or four. I can tell you that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it was, it just, you just never know nowadays. And, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. I asked Jeff this on our podcast. I said this today on our podcast with Jeff. I said, I think you could make a reasonable case for about a dozen drivers to win the championship because of the format, because of the uncertainties, because of what they, their mm -hmm. pedigree are. Is, is that a fair number in your mind off the top of your head? My, I, I get asked this question a lot. I've always said that there's nine there. I thought that there was nine drivers that, um, were capable of winning a championship. Um, now, since I had said that nine, I think a few more have emerged as contenders. There's a difference in a contender and there's a difference in one that can go all the way, right? Um, Blaney, you know, even before this year, he was always on that list of nine mm -hmm. that he can go all the way. He's certainly he's with a good enough team and the resources, he's a 
definitely a talented enough driver. He's always been on the list, right? Um, I probably, you know, since then, you know, you you probably add Chastain, you know, For from sure. from the historical list. Now we lost Harvick, so that yep. one drops. So what about Busher? Brad? I see that as a very popular pre race out on a limb championship four. Busher makes a championship four. Um I I think I need to see did he get to the round of eight? Yeah. He did. Yep. What he was just it? wasn't wasn't spectacular. They kind of they kind of lost a little bit of their, they, their they, steam. They a lost, bit. but he can win on a lot of different tracks. Yeah, well, he did, right? He won three in a row, right? Yeah, three ovals in a row. There were yeah. some road courses. Oh there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can see that as a good dark horse. I mean, Busher. Yeah. You know, I've I've sang his praises for a very long time on his Super Speedway. I I think he's one of the best. I just quietly one of the best, right? Um, I don't know the. Versus Brad, I think he probably has the upper hand. You know, who beats who on a weekly basis? Just barely. They're always together, but it's like he's just always just a, a, a spot or two, right? So, sure, if you think Brad is a championship threat, how could you not consider Busher? Can I, ask you, I mean, I, I'm talking myself right into it right now. Can I ask you one more name that we kind of debated a little bit? Yeah. What about Reddick? I, yes. think he, I think, I think yeah. he is. Yeah, I think he is. I mean, certainly... When I look at, you know, last year, there's a few guys that I think will absolutely take a jump from last year. Um, Reddick, you know, came up. He he just, I think the short tracks is he knows he's got to improve on the short tracks. Um, and that is a big part of getting to the championship four. And, and again, that it, the struggles kind of went beyond just Martinsville, right? Even at Phoenix, it was just, yeah, you know, just not, Real, not really there. So I, I think he knows, you know, where he's got to work, um, you know. So I, I think absolutely the guy can make it to the Final Four. Certainly the talent is there. Pit crews will continue to get better. I said this is going to be a long process. It is a long process building your own pit crews and all that stuff. So he is he's in that as well. I think if I had to write them down, there's going to be 10. I won't. I, I'm not going to disclose to you every name on that list because <laughs> I've already I, made the list. You did. <laughs> yeah. um, I, let me see it. I'm it's not pretty gonna. easy. This is nine. Okay. Uh, who, but I feel, but I, because somebody will be left out and, and the feelings will be hurt. Um, yeah, those for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, nine. <laughs> can I see the nine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think, Oh, I lost my audio. audio. That's my fault. It's just the problem is I can't hear myself. That's a first. Um, but anyway, I think Logano takes the, one of the biggest jumps. Um, as far as contender, and, you know, if you, if you just want to talk about who's going to gain the most in the point standings from last year to this year, Austin Dillon has got it. <laughs> he has to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was just bad. Ten right else. That was yeah. That's a big number, and on top of that, you just just wasn't in the top five or ten that much. And so, I think he's needs to improve. You know, I don't know ten, twelve positions. I mean, I, I don't know what would be cons you know what would be uh, considered appropriate. You know, I mean, how much you know can he really jump um, if he can win a race somehow? He I mean he has before. Um, you know, he could make it in the top sixteen. But I just think as far as like who's gonna be the contenders week in, week out, I think Logano just had an off year last year. Is I found it just so very interesting and in, in that we 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 kind of wrote Penske off as they're just not fast enough. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't have they weren't gonna beat the Hendrick and the Gibbs cars on speed and all that. And that was so true until it wasn't. Yeah. Right. But there was only one of them. Right. And that was what is so intriguing to me is that in a world where everything is the same. And we know for a fact that the 22 and the 12, they're, they had the, the equipment did not change yeah. between the two of them. But only one car 
really stepped up those last six races. We talked about this a lot on our podcast, um, and you can hear now on Dirty Mo. Um, you look at Penske. They haven't had a great organizational wide dominant season probably since 2020. Like they've they've got they've hit on it. Like Joey obviously hit on it. Ryan obviously hit on it. But when was the last time we talked about the Penske cars week in and week out are the cars to be? We talked a lot about Gibbs. We talked a lot about Hendrick. At times it was Chastain. But when is it like, wow, these Penske cars, you got to go through them? It, it's not been mm -hmm. the case. It's been one or the other. It hasn't been an organizational wide thing. It's very odd because we talk a lot about the others, but we don't talk about them in that same manner. And it, it's been the case. Yeah. I mean, it's just whatever they found, it, does it start the new season that way, right? I mean, if so, then, I mean, th th they could just set the world on absolute fire. Um, who's your favorites? I mean, if you had a set of Final Four right now, who you got? Go ahead, Jeff. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. Go ahead, okay. Jeff. I can, well, I can I break your heart you in two year. seconds. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not picking you to win the championship anymore because that's just. <laughs> it just. It just doesn't work. <laughs> no, I mean, I could pick you to win the regular season championship, but it, like to say, oh yeah, you're gonna make the final four. It, there's gonna be at some point. It feels like a piano falling out of the sky that has nothing to do with you, lands on your car, and then my pick is ruined. So. You know what's what's the point? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's fair. So, I, 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 it's a fair. <laughs> you, you can only play the same numbers on the lotto ticket so many times. You're just like it, it's not going to fucking hit. So I got to move on. <laughs> Here's Denny you know, again, so whining so about not winning the championship. <laughs> so much of this is scary to pick at this part of the year because you don't know how good right. the Toyotas are going to be with the. Well, that's what makes it hard. It's going to be, yeah. So, I mean, if I had to sit here today, I mean, it's hard to picture Byron dropping off. It's hard to picture Larson dropping off unless Chevys are way off compared to the other two. So it's like, I kind of want to put both them in. And then, like, I, I just, I don't really trust, like, the Fords consistently. It's, it's hard to be like, oh, yeah, Logano or Blaney again because mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from. So I almost want to just say, like, maybe, like, Bell is, is continuing to prove, and that's, then you, if nothing happens, but that's a big if. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm it, kind of tempted to put Reddick in, but yeah, I, I I think all is fair. Um, bounce back season. Also, let, let me just let me just talk on some bounce back guys. Alex Bowman. Yeah, I think he was hurt. My that's my personal opinion. I'm not a doctor. Or anything, but I went through a very similar injury. I, I, it was probably very likely he was not a hundred percent in his car control feel um, due to the regular uh, when he came back. Um, I think that he has a bounce back season. Uh, makes I think he makes the playoffs. I think he probably wins a race. Certainly, yeah, I, I would probably put him down as winning a race. Um, he should. You know, I with when you have, you know, you drive for Hendrick Motorsports, there's expectations of winning a race. It, it's very modest ones, right? But I, I think you know it's easy to write him off based off of results from last year. I don't think that that's fair. I think he needs a little bit bigger sample size. Uh, let him prove himself this year um, and and bounce back. So my biggest bounce backs is going to be, um, you know, Austin Dillon from a points perspective. Joey Logano, Alex Bowman. What about Chase Elliott? Yeah. Where does Carr finish in the regular season or in the championship? Because, Ten. okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's hard. I, I left him out. I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have left him out, but I just, I, I just gave him a bye and, didn't say, oh, he had a shit season. He, he was, again, the guy was hurt. He missed races. Um, they just didn't win. And then they probably made aggressive calls, we know, in a few races to try to get the win. And they chase, chase, chase. Next thing you know, it's no different. You, you go for it on your own 30. If you don't get it, well, then shit, you just gave up 20, you know, seven more and points. And now you got to be even more aggressive because yeah. you're in an even bigger yeah. hole. Yeah. And so they were behind the eight ball right from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Chase is going to win multiple races in 2024 i would i would probably book that um so I, I i see bounce backs from all of them you know i just consider okay 
he was gone, I considered him finishing 10th in points. You know what I mean? So that's why I didn't put him in the total bounce, the big bounce back pool. What is the outlook for Toyota this year with the new design, the new nose? Is that going to make Toyota better? Like, should we put more stock into into Toyota drivers going into 2024? I mean, we think so, right? I mean, you like these guys. I mean, we almost fly as much blind as these the media does in their speculation on trying to figure out who's who's going to be good. Because while we certainly wouldn't change things if we didn't think it was better, um, this was the first opportunity that you know we got to build a car, and the rules didn't change on us right in the middle of winter. You know, so everyone built. Um, their their next gen cars right and right before 2022 but then we started cutting holes in the windshield and the in the back windows and shortening the spoiler and cutting horsepower and next thing you know everyone's like well this isn't what i submitted for a car you know and so chevy was the last to get the update um in 2022 so they had the most up-to-date based off of the rules that they knew right and so then when then we had an update, um, you know, to some minor things uh, with the front of our cars last year. And then, you know, with a new Camry XSE coming out um, on, on the production line, you know, it was time for Toyota to do a complete overhaul, which is what they did. So we, I mean, we cross the fingers and hope, but we would think that certainly it would be better and more suited to the rules that we know. He's, I, I, he's the expert. I defer to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it comes to t cars and, and parts yeah. and pieces, I know nothing. Yep. Um, well, uh, oh, hey, they're, are they gonna, they're going to run this electric car this yeah. weekend, right? They, uh, yeah, they're going to have a, a demo run, if you will. Hmm. That'll be interesting to see, it's right? A, it's a, I saw it. Um, it's, it's different. It's, it looks different. It looks very different. Which that's fine. But it I, doesn't. I it looks, but it does actually have more characteristics to a stock car. I agree. Than I thought because I, I didn't know what to expect. I kind of had an image in my head. Mm -hmm. But then I saw it. I'm like, you know what? That's actually not as far in left field as I thought it might be. How yep. I I, I agree. Um, you know how you. I think it's. Uh, it's one of those things where we were like, holy shit! You know, this was a year ago. Maybe yeah, a year ago. But, a year and a half ago, they said, "Hey, we're thinking about doing a exhibition electric race last in, during last year's clash, right?" They were talking about doing a couple races, right? It and wasn't it just was one. Like, Whoa, wait a minute! What the hell? Where's that up from? But then, not not NASCAR's fault. It's the OEM. They're all split on what is the That's future the thing, and that is the thing, right? Is that we're not going to invest all this money in this if that's not even the future of driving and there are transportation <laughs> and i gotta be careful when i say this because again this is kind of going down a road i'm not 100 percent comfortable in but like from the conversation i've had with folks on the oem side they i don't want to say having second thoughts about the mm -hmm. electric stuff but they're having a they're questioning maybe a little bit of like is this the right thing is this the future is this something that's going to actually be around in what form in 10 years you know the the challenge certainly is that what it's starting to come out in it, there's just not enough minerals you can't yeah. there's just not enough batteries that can be produced to go all electric and it, so it's not actually feasible if it did work would it um help the bottom line of teams like would it be cheaper to to go this route i, I don't think so i mean i think all the parts would probably be it would be about the same um you know uh, everyone's you know this probably a little NASCAR 101, but I, I feel as though, you know, not every team's engine deal is the same, right? They might be the same engines, but some teams pay for them. Some teams do not. Some people get more information than others um, as far as simulations and stuff. But you're looking at a probably the most level playing field you've ever seen in NASCAR from a aerodynamic perspective, from a horsepower perspective. Um, it's just a matter of who's got to pay for it and who who does not. Um, it, if it was electrification, you probably would have the same thing. Like, hey, you got to buy the components, and Team A does not. And that's just because the, the manufacturers only have so many resources that they can give away, um, and they do that to their top 
top flight teams. I think this is so overblown, this whole thing, because it's it's like the the fans are being triggered by imagining Formula E. Oh, I know. And the golf cart sounding stuff, and it's very disorienting <laughs> with no sound. And I just don't, I cannot envision a scenario where NASCAR goes, yeah, we're going to have cars running around with no sound. Like, it sounds like they went to Japan and saw these hydrogen they did. powered cars race, and they had a real engine sound. And they, in this preseason briefing we had with them, they seemed much more interested in mm -hmm. doing that with whatever they use, you know, for SUV series or yep. whatever it's going to be, than having an electric. I mean, I think this electric one is what they have now, but like, I wouldn't, if you're a fan that's like, oh my gosh, I the day they go silent is the day I leave NASCAR. Like, yeah, I think they would agree with you. They, they don't right. want that. Right. Um, yeah. Especially I, I, for, for sure. Le Mans, like, they got all the feedback from Garage 56. These cars are loud. That's America. And they're like, yeah, we are, you know? <laughs> what were you going to say, Jordan? I, it just feels like this is, this is late to the thing. I mean, yeah. if this would have been five, six years ago, this is probably when you should have really pushed it. Now it feels like you're, if you go down this road, you're, you're getting into the party late and the party's going to be dead. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, it, nobody wants to speculate and make that kind of investment on a speculation of what is the actual future of uh, transportation. Like I, I hate to even say driving now. Cause I, I don't know. I don't know. We're supposed to have flying cars by now is what I was told in 1995, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't. So I don't know. I mean, we we're liable to be just driving around these combustion engines mm. for the next 50 years. Eh? Who knows? If you go to electric, you can just put a bunch of panini cards in the spokes and you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> well, uh, y'all want to have a dear Denny or something? Yeah, I, I, have I have a, qu I have a question have for you. Yeah, just on our notes here, we have that the 11 car has a new lead engineer this year. I'm mm. curious how uh, a change in a lead engineer affects the team because that's kind of a, a position swap that we really don't hear about. You hear about crew chiefs right. moving teams, but like, how much of an effect does lead engineer have? Is that like the yeah. offensive coordinator it for is. a football team? It is. A that's a very good analogy, and it it's... It, it broke my heart. I, I lost my engineer, um, my lead engineer for the last, I hate to be wrong on this, but I don't know, 10 years. Um, he was with Wheels back in the day. I mean, he, he's just been part of the fold of the 11 team for a very long time. But, you know, he's he wants to be a crew chief, right? And the typical program within Joe Gibbs Racing, if you want to be a crew chief, is that if you, know, you kind of work your way through the engineering program, you then became, become a lead engineer on a cup team. And then you go back down to Xfinity to learn how to manage people. Uh, and then you come back up. You know, you get called back up when the opportunity arises. I don't know that I agree with that philosophy anymore because the Xfinity cars are so different from cup cars. And if you go back down to Xfinity, you're losing up-to-date information of what's going on in the cup engineering world for a year at least yeah he could be down there for many many years you just never know um but you know sam he was he was a huge part of our team hate to lose him but you know we we brought up we, you know joe gibbs racing is it's been so good about hiring from within so we brought someone up one of the engineers from uh brandon jones's car um up to be uh, uh one of our engineers we moved ryan bowers who was our uh, second engineer now up to lead. Uh, so pr all promotions from within and part of that process. But it is. It's These are one of the things that we hear about in other sports. The offensive coordinator for this is taking the head co coaching job from there. That happens in NASCAR all the time. You just don't hear about it because, you know, how many people knew about Sam McCauley, right? So it's just it's just very, very different in that aspect. Uh, but, yeah, it's – it's uh, it's gonna be cool for him. Um, I think he's with Sheldon Creed, um, over there. So I think they're gonna win lots of races. I think they're gonna be really, really strong. He, that would be my sleeper pick, uh, in Xfinity. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, what what are you thinking? No, I was just if we're moving on to Dear Danny, I have a Dear Danny and a Dear Jordan. Oh jeez. All right. <laughs> nice. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> It'll bring Jeff. <laughs> Jeff will be brought into the. Oh, okay. Oh boy. I haven't seen. This is not on my sheet. Please proceed. Oh, okay. Well, we'll 
All right, we'll lead with with dear Jordan, uh, and that's Jordan. Have you picked out any outfits for Jeff to wear to get uh, totally oh, that's here? Right. So I knew I figured this was going to come up because um, this frequently does, and I will actually <laughs> give you guys. Jeff has not seen this, so I'm going to show sneak you. peek. He won't. Oh, see no. it. I, this. I'm not saying this is going to be the outfit, but I'm thinking that this is very, very likely going to be the outfit. If you want to pass that along, okay. Oh Lord, I feel like I've seen you wear this, Jordan. I that I think Jeff would look great in that. I think it is a stylish, effective outfit. I, and I told him earlier, I think his wife will look at him differently in a m much, well, I'll just say differently way. I think that's a good outfit. To your benefit, Jeff, it does complement your physique well. Yeah, and it, it's not nearly as bad as it could have been. Can you just look? <sighs> okay. Jordan, can you please excuse yourself to go to the bathroom, go to Denny's closet, get one of those outfits he was wearing at the Travis Scott concert. <laughs> At least something like that. He's got plenty of stuff. Yeah. You don't even have to take the shoes, even though we know how now he has how many shoes he has. Just take how something many, from this. Jared, public. what was the number? Like five hundred and thirty-two or something. Wow. Holy crap. I respect that. What so was much. interesting though about that is that I, I've of course gotten tons of comments from the shoe collection uh, reel that we did. Is that that's only from the last four years. I get boxes of stuff every month, right? And so I go through it and I pick through. It might be one shoe, you know, for 10 years, I would pick one shoe out of every 10. Well, finally, I'm like, I'm just going to keep everything. I'll keep all the stuff that I don't want to personally keep in a warehouse. And then one day I'll give it to my kids and I don't know, they'll sell it or whatever the hell they want to do with it. Right. Or, or bring out dad's old Jordan collection and then just have a heyday with their friends when they get older. That's what they probably should do. Um, so this is just what I've collected over this, that, this four year period. So now is, is Jeff fitted for, for that? I got some measurements. Oh, you did? Yeah, Cause so. it's, that's very key that he yeah. fits that properly. Yes. Very key. So I'm did, very skeptical that this is, I have you're no gonna idea. Look good. Did you, you're going to look good. Who'd you get the measurements from? He gave them to me. Oh, you, okay. Well, I, was, I mean, he said, what's your waist size? So I told him, but then he's like, what's your jacket size? And I'm like, I don't I, shoe size. Too. I got to buy shoes, it, but I'm not measured. So you you you're footing the bill for this? Yeah. Okay. To be fair, Jeff, I don't think Jordan is trying to make you look foolish. No. Like you're not wearing no. chain, okay. chain link okay. pattern no. jeans. Yeah, here. You're, you're gonna look good. You won't look foolish. Okay. You'll. Okay. You, I, I guess. <laughs> Come on, that's a good looking <laughs> outfit, guys. I'm sorry. No, I know, I know, I know. Now, is yeah. this because of the the poll that like yeah. you were cheating on? I wasn't cheating. He I was. played in the gray area. Thank you, Danny. Uh, you the were in the. <laughs> dark I checked. I checked. Can I was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was. That was. Uh, that was pushing it. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your feeling on this, Jared? With, by was Jordan by asking the public, what, what was your? You were like, would you think or something? Yeah, like I just. That? Hey, what, yeah. Uh, I just want some feedback. What's your on the feelings race? Well, about this race? Yeah. And then he would use that information one to time. then, one time. One time. Oh, it's just once. It was only once. No, but then he said he was. Then he started texting people, asking them once he got in trouble for it, and he was texting people whether what they thought. So, so. yeah, they had on the teardown. They give I, a, I know the the percentage of yeah. like what do you think the good race I, is going to be? Did you have a list? Aware. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, do I think it's fair that he does that? I mean, if it's not, he's in the close rule book. to you, but I'll stick up for you if he wants to fight. <laughs> if it's not in the rule book, maybe you just add that to the rules this year, Jeff. Yeah. Amen. 12 dash one dash two. <laughs> then, then, he didn't, <laughs> then he didn't hear me though when I said that Jeff, you're 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 not gonna look foolish. It's not chain link pattern jeans. Yeah. As well, long as I don't look like a clown, I mean that's no, probably no, a plus because no. my expectations no. are pretty low. So yeah, you know no. you're not well, gonna look yeah. like a clown. All right. All right well, wait, 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 dear Denny, real quick. Oh, another one? Yeah. Well, you didn't oh, you dear Denny, you dear Jordan. Right. <laughs> How much input will you have when it comes to the wedding plans? Listen, it took me 15 years to get to the step. Can we just take one step at a time? <laughs> why, why, why we got always, why we always got to fast forward to, oh, what's next? It's like, <laughs> hey, we just saw a great race, and it's like, oh, well, we gotta, we gotta do it bigger. We gotta do it better next week or next year, like. It, Let's just soak this all in, guys. Let's just let's just enjoy the moment. <laughs> I think for every year you dated, you had another year for how long until the wedding actually is. So you should have the wedding shouldn't be for like another fifteen years. 
Oh man, I, Boy, Jordan, I, it's a one. I don't know if I, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to make it that long. <laughs> that's a, that's a long time. Um, or maybe uh, a month for every year. There you go. Just keep kicking the can down the road. That's what right? you got to do. That's the secret. Jeff, is that a reasonable timeline, you think? A, a month for every year that you waited? Or? I mean, it's probably going to take about a year to plan it right anyway, right? Mm. So I, I mean, not... I, the good news is I don't overdo anything. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it will be just a very low-key way. Totally understated. <laughs> way. Yes. Way. Absolutely. We didn't even get into Ray Shop updates in this in this podcast. I don't have to wait for that. <laughs> that'll have to wait for sure. Uh, uh, is your sho- is your shoulder? We're better? good. That's the last. I mean, it, it's not good. It's this is. It was. It's going to be six months before I'm like really, really good. Um, I'm in the sim now. Uh, we're slowly working reps into it. Uh, you know, I ran two hundred and twenty some laps on a mile and a half. Um, you know, last last week, not in a row. Like I, I got to take some breaks in there. Um, and it was pretty fatigued, but I think the clash is actually almost a good warm up because it's just short enough and God knows we can't have any green flag racing there. So, um, it's, I think it'll be a good warm up, and I'll be stronger when we get to Daytona. So, uh, the shoulder is good. I, I can tell you this for an absolute fact. It is going to be better than it ended last season. Last season was a absolute nightmare. That's such a good Boy, subtle you can really jab. tell that full speed, too. <laughs> it was bad, Sorry, I, can't, I can't even hear Jordan, which is a blessing, so I can't tell when I'm talking over him. But uh, <laughs> No, I was going to say, you can really see in full speed that, that that's one thing that I thought was more behind this. Like, I don't think that you were as public about it with the media, like, oh, my gosh, like how much you couldn't even lift it as you see in the show, like how bad it really – like I don't think we realized the extent of it until pretty late. Um, yeah, and, I mean, some of the season, right? Because I, a lot of it is you know, probably ego driven of like, I don't want to create any excuse. Like, I, for, I mean, if the, the power steering doesn't break, we still may, we still were good enough. You know, my crew chief will bang his head against the wall because even last night we we're talking in his office and then it's just like, you know, damn it. I knew you were not a hundred. I knew you were not a hundred percent. And you kept telling me I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, but I wasn't. But there's nothing I could have done about it. You know, it it's just this is something that I put off, and I, I put it off so late that I ended up doing major, major damage to it. Um, you know, the, a few days before the Vegas playoff race, and when I did it, I knew I was fucked. But it was nothing I could do about it. We just had to deal with it. But I I did not want it to be a, an excuse whatsoever. We didn't make it just because of various reasons. Maybe I wasn't good enough or whatever, but uh, but it, it sucks. I feel really good about this year being in a better physical place than I was for the last two years. Um, and that goes with, like, road course racing, everything. There's there's just no doubt there was some fatigue going on uh, in some races that I just didn't, you know, uh, where I feel that I'm 100%. If, I hate to say it, but if you're not as – physically strong on lap 200 as you are lap one everything is a little slower and so um you know certainly i feel good about where we're going to be this year with that before we wrap up this review comes from kcdc underscore east this show is a great window into the nascar world i hope more drivers follow suit denny keep up the great work and go get that title this year lifelong nascar fan new 11 fan i o f y d h (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so, hey they're not giving up on me jeff you quitter I, i've been through long <laughs> enough long enough hey i've, I've learned my lesson you, sorry right you, you just you end up after martinsville or phoenix every year with your hands in your head like me just like where did it all go wrong, wrong again, again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so hey breaking news though i love we do a little breaking news every time I O F Y D H. It, That's dead. It's our freaking year. Uh, Denny Ham- it was. It started with L F G D H. Okay, we know what that means. Then it was I. What is it? I Y O F. I O F Y. Yeah. Okay. So it's our next. I don't know about next week, but certainly before the season, Daytona 500, we will debut 
the new rallying cry. <laughs> And I, I, need, I need the people behind me on this. I'm going to wear the shirt or hoodie on Actions Detrimental. It will then go on sale. But all I can say is y'all better be ready because <laughs> this, this, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Running out of rallying cries. <laughs> Running out of rallying cries. <laughs> Running out of rallying cries. Please. Well, hey, like, like my friends say, hey, we can always... Make another hat. So we're, get, we're just going to have to make another hat. So uh, that'll come out in a few weeks. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys post-clash and uh, get ready for the Daytona 500. Jordan, thank you thank for you. joining. Jeff, thank you from afar. You're on the other side of the country. Appreciate your virtual presence. And uh, appreciate everyone tuning in. Be sure to rate, review, and follow wherever you get your podcast. That includes the new Dirty Mo Teardown. Hey. We got to tell them we we got a new place to find us now, I'm right? About, um, okay. You read the note. <laughs> Sorry, you're the reader. Go ahead. Go ahead. Also, we have a brand new YouTube page, so make sure to go subscribe to it. That's Actions Detrimental on YouTube. We also link it in the show description down below. Um, and full videos will be going there first this year, so you no longer have to wait till Friday for the full video version of this podcast. Sweet. It'll be, it'll be out with the audio version or shortly after it. Wow. All right. You guys behind the scenes at Dirty Mo, you're going to be doing some heavy uh, legwork on the editing, getting it out quick. So thank you all and uh, look forward to the season. Make sure you tune in to the Teardown every Sunday night right after the race on Dirty Mo's channel. You know, when you kind of digest this whole Chastain Larson thing, you definitely have to go back earlier.